Hey everyone, so today I'm going to start a new series that teaches you how to configure your terminal development environment. I will walk you through everything you need to know to configure your terminal, Tmux, and finally NeoVim. Now, my hope from this series is to introduce you to a new way of working outside of your usual VS Code. And yeah, so let's get to it. The first thing you need to start with is your terminal. It's where you're going to be spending most of your time. Now, at the time of recording this video, there are a couple of great options out there. So you can be using things like uh, Ghosty, Kitty, Alacrity, Wiseterm, iTerm2, and probably Warp. I'm not going to tell you which one you should be using. Instead, I'm just going to show you what I'm using and how I'm using it. Um, one note though, so if you end up using like Warp, and note that Warp actually has some uh, AI built-in feature. So you pretty much can replace Cloud Code or Codex with simply Warp. All right, so for me, I actually enjoy using Ghosty and it's very simple, very fast. It's native as in it works like any other Mac app and it does not need a lot of configuration. So in this video, the goal is to configure Ghosty. The next one would be to configure Tmux and then later on, we'll spend a couple of videos to configure like NeoVim from A to Z. And then at the end, we can touch on some AI related things. So with that, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you need to do is go to ghosty.org and then hit download. Here you pick your operating system. I'm on Mac and I like using Homebrew. So all I have to do is just click on this one and then you just run this command. So if I go to my terminal, the built-in one, and I paste this thing here, after I press enter, I should be able to simply have Ghosty installed. And then if I open Ghosty, this is how it looks like by default. I can zoom in a bit here. So you see, we have a nice theme by default and a good font. And this is kind of by design. So if you see the overview here in the documentation, you see that its philosophy by nature is, is it has to work out of the box with very minimal kind of configuration. And that's really the heart of it. Now the configuration is text-based, uh, it's nothing special. And then if you look here, you see that the configuration is usually hosted under config ghosty config. So in your configuration directory essentially. And this is like a simple um, example of how it looks like, a key and then a value. Now, if you go see the options here, you see there's like a ton of things you can uh, customize from font all the way to how the window looks and all that kind of thing. I'm not gonna go over every single one of them, but note there is some Mac specific things and some Linux specific things. I'm on Mac obviously, so I'm gonna be using some of the Mac related ones. Also note that we have a CLI tool, so you can run ghosty plus whatever command you want to run and you can have access to things like um, themes or key bindings or even I think documentation so a lot of things you can do here anyways to get started if you open up ghosty here the first thing as I said you have to do is just create a ghosty directory um, inside of it you can create a config file so touch config and then we can open up vim and you remember that this is mostly like a key value pair. So the key equal value, that's pretty much the syntax we will be using. And yeah, so we can start. So the first thing I wanna change is the family or the font family, and it's an equal, remember? So you don't have to put like um, these here. So you can just type in the name of the font. I like to use Berkeley Mono, and then I can save it. Now, if I reload, Notice it changes in real time. And this is another thing. On Mac, you can do like shift command P and it opens up this command palette thingy. And this has a list of all the different functionalities that Ghosty provides, which is fantastic, by the way. It's just a nice way to work. So I can do like reload. I can change um, the title of the page or like the config, this guy here. All right, so next, let's change the font size. Um, let's do font size equal to, let's say 24 because I want to record, so I can do reload. And it's probably already on 24, that's why it didn't change. And next, let me show you some things. So if I do ghosty plus list themes, you can see all the themes that comes kind of built in by default. And you can press a slash and do like groove box, and then press enter, and you can use like uh, the Vim uh, kind of key binding to go up and down. So I like this one. If you press enter, it tells you how you can set it. So theme equal groove box, dark, hard. That's what I want to use. So we can open up our configuration again. And here we can just say theme is equal to groove box, dark, hard. Now I could save, reload. 
and voila now we have a theme that i like as you can see it looks pretty much like groovebox all right so let's go back here and continue doing some configurations so another thing i like is i like the cursor to be a block so cursor style is equal to block i'm gonna run through a bunch of them quickly just to kind of uh, speed up this process next will be adjust cell height to be equal to 35 percent title is equal to empty so the title here would be like um this guy here this here i want it to be empty meaning that i don't want it to have anything when i start my terminal next the padding so window padding balance is equal to true let me just uh, quickly reload here and you see things are starting to look different so adjust cell height kind of increase the kind of distance between the two lines title will be not, nothing so like you see here there's no more title and the padding is more like balanced now one more thing i like to do here is uh, window padding x to be equal to five and then i like the window padding this one to be equal to zero let me reload and that's it i guess it's balanced already so nothing changes great um next one would one of my favorite actually is window save state this is very useful and i can set it to always you see if i quit this and then reopen it again it should be in the same directory and that's the idea so if i open up vim again and go back here notice that window save state essentially it saves whatever directory you were in before and you can just continue from there this is very useful and you'll see why a bit later so next is the title bar so mac os title bar style um, i actually like it to be transparent so trans i think this ch changes how the tab bar thing looks like so that's how i like it and now for some key binding um, as i mentioned earlier you have actually the ability to set different key bindings however you want and you can look at the trigger sequences and actions so all the things you want to do with the terminal you can pretty much look at here for example and then set a key binding to trigger one of those things right so for me there's a couple and let me just paste these things to save you some time because uh, it's kind of repetitive so here's my favorite ones and i'll show you how i actually use them um, let me just save here and go a bit up all right so for key bindings if i press command s which is like a prefix um, similar to tmux but essentially command s and then r would reload the configuration so if i press um actually i might need to reload this first and then i can do command s and then r and this will reload the configuration one more time um command s and then x will close it so if i open up a new tab and then say command s and x this will close the tab prefix c will create a new tab so command s c new tab and yeah if you want to move the tabs back and forth you can simply do uh, command s comma or command s period move it back and forth now for splitting the terminal vertical or horizontal there is a command here so you can do command s and then backslash it will divide it like vertically uh, to the right uh, command s uh, minus in my case it goes down and you can simply just exit in so many ways so command s x and that's how i can split and you can also move between them so command s and let's say we're gonna do this one now i can go back to this left side by saying command s h or command s l that's how i kind of jump between the two you can also do command s z and that's that will essentially um zoom in right in, in vim for example we have um i think zen mode or something it does something similar and in tmux has something like that as well so it's kind of inspired from that so command s Z will show or hide the split and finally if you, let's say we change this and we want to equalize it I can just command S and then E it will equalize them and that's pretty much the ones I use constantly however it's important to note that all of that can be done with the command line which is in a way becoming my preferred way of doing this so if I want to change the title for example I can say ghosty now we have this title here it's ghosty and let's say i want to split let's say i want to split right and voila we do the same thing right and then split space and then down 
does that, right? So you can pretty much do it in two ways, whatever you're comfortable with. I kind of switch between the two every now and then, but it's all the same, really. It depends on what mood I'm in, I guess. But this is the cool thing. This everything I need to do with the ghosty configuration. There's nothing else I need to add here. Yes, you can make it transparent. You can make all kind of thing. But if you want a functional, simple ghosty configuration, that's all of it. And that's the beauty of this terminal. It's just very simple. It does not need a lot of configuration to work perfectly fine. And yeah, one other thing you can do, because this is actually kind of a native experience on Mac. So you can do uh, command, shift, and backslash. And it opens up this view. If you've used Safari before, this is very similar. I can just open up a new tab if I want to, or go to the previous one. Uh, I don't ever use this, but it's an option. And you see the tabs also look more like a Mac native. I know on Linux, you have more options, but for Mac development, I guess this is um, this is how it looks like. So far, I like it. I think it looks fantastic. It's very fast. It has even more options. Like, I don't even know if I can accent quickly from here, but essentially it has like a dev tool that you can use. I found myself to rarely use that. However, for what it is, it's perfect. All right, so that's uh, really everything I wanted to talk about in this video. It's like the first video and it's only just about ghosty configuring a terminal so there's not much you can do with these things but from my experience this has been more than enough to do everything i wanted uh, in a terminal there is some missing features still like you can't do search um like command f for example doesn't do anything here i've heard that they will add this feature very soon so hopefully they do yeah for anything else you need to learn about this uh, my preferred way is just go to this option references and find whatever option you want and set it up and I did run through all these things super quickly because I don't want to bore you with this, but this is how I did it. I just went through the options, picked the ones I care about and put them there and, and that was it. It worked perfectly fine. So yeah, that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one.